If you wonder how bad hackers on the internet take over websites and you want to protect yourself from it, this is the video for you. I'm talking about the AWS misconfiguration known as the dangling DNS, which can lead to a subdomain takeover, aka subdomain, a cloud security villain. In this video, I'm going to go through the common causes for subdomain. Why is it bad? Three places where you can find it and three ways you can fix it as well. Let's get into it. The origin story of subdomain is very interesting. When you have a DNS that is hosted by AWS and you delete the resource behind the website, that leads to a dangling DNS which can be taken over by an attacker. Or alternatively, you could be using infrastructure as code to create your website and your manage your DNSs. However, sometimes it does not delete all the resources if you are deleting, say, the website or just the backend resource. Depending on the resource that you're dealing with, the one of the resources may not be deleted, which allows a dangling DNS to happen where you're able to take over that domain because, yeah, well, it was just not deleted. So now anyone can take over this. It may push some buttons. But why is this bad? This is bad because imagine this. If I have a website, I don't know, ashishrajan.com or cloudsecuritypodcast.tv, and if you take over, if you were to take it and make it into a men's fashion website, although I might not hate you for it, but I would definitely not be happy if my cybersecurity website is turned into a men's fashion blog. So that is what the problem is if you have subdomain takeover happen on your AWS account. Now imagine this from a McDonald's or Nike or some of the big brands perspective. If you were to do a subdomain takeover for that and replace that with ashishrajanisawesome.com, probably not a great site for someone to just go and be okay with it, right? Now, I'm not saying you should do this, but that's why this is bad. But let's find out where can you find these. One of the most common hiding places for subdomain is usually AWS Route 53, which is a DNS a service from AWS and can have an AWS S3 bucket at the back end to host a static website. Now, if that static website was removed, your attacker has an opportunity to recreate that AWS S3 bucket because it is a global name. They can recreate that S3 bucket with the same C name as the website and take over your subdomain. No! The next hiding place is Elastic Beanstalk, which comes with its own CNAME. And for whatever reason, if you haven't registered the domain for the CNAME as the CNAME of the, I've just said CNAME too many times. Let's just simplify it. If the Elastic Beanstalk domain that you have been provided has a custom domain associated to it, and the CNAME for that domain is no longer active and someone else takes over, that's also a dangling DNS issue, which again gives rise to subdomain. Now, the third example for this is AWS CloudFront, which can also have an AWS S3 bucket at the back. Now, if you remove the AWS S3 bucket itself, you again give rise to subdomain takeover. As scary as it is, it is possible to still fix these or maybe identify and proactively work on this. Because AWS is API enabled, you are allowed to use something like an infrastructure as code to define what infrastructure that you need, which could include websites, star 53 domains, S3 buckets, and everything else that goes with it. When you use a delete command in your IAC, it deletes every resource. It would re also wait for resources to be fully deleted before it stops the program. So you can be rest assured that everything that is connected to that DNS that you're removing is completely removed. Now, another way to make sure you don't have dangling DNS or subdomain issues is to have a regular inventory of what your current domains are, and also doing a six month review of all the users and domains that are there in the organization so that you can periodically refresh and delete any dangling DNSs that may have been left behind for whatever reason. Third and final way, which is a proactive way of dealing with this is if you have S3 buckets that you know are linked as a static website to a CloudFront, R53, or anything else, you probably want to have some kind of monitoring, especially catering to that particular configuration on that AWS S3 bucket that it is enabled for static workload. The moment it becomes available on the internet, which it would be because it's a static website. If you don't intend to make it public, just make it private using Lambda function. If you write a small script to match whether there's a DNS entry linked to the S3 bucket or not, that could be a good way to identify and remediate any dangling DNSs that may, you may have in your environment. Now, that's pretty much what I had for this video. If you enjoyed learning about subdomain cloud security villain, then you would also be interested in learning about all the other AWS misconfiguration, AKA cloud security villains that I can list over here. It's the entire playlist on our YouTube channel and LinkedIn, so definitely go and check that out. And I'll leave a link for the blog articles for each one of them in the description, so you can check that out later as well. And while you're here, if you enjoy content about cloud security, we talk about cloud security every day, every week, every year, yeah. So definitely consider subscribing and following us on our LinkedIn and YouTube channels. We talk about cloud security every day. So if you have any questions as well, make sure you drop them in the comments and I'll try and answer them. Talk to you in the next video. Peace.